Okay, so this is the engine compartment of the 2009 Subaru Forester. And the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and replace the spark plugs on it and the spark plug wires. These are all original OEM wiring that has been here since day one. And to do that, we're going to have to move stuff out of the way because it's very tight here. So order of business, remove the air cleaner box and the associated hose. And we might possibly have to remove the battery. I don't remember if I can fit my hand in there or not. So I'm going to go ahead and start that and we'll get back to you. Okay, so I went ahead and loosened the clamps for the air intake hose, those two. Next thing we want to do is uh, unplug the mass airflow sensor right here. So there's a tab right here you need to push right there. Push down with it, but at the same time push in on the connector. Push the tab, then pull the connector out. If you don't push in before you push this tab down, then things tend to get stuck. Okay, so on to the next step. And that's to just unhook the air cleaner box. Like so. There might be some clips here. Um, there's that. So you just take pliers, push, squeeze these two ears in. And eventually it'll let go. And that whole assembly comes right out. And from there, you have better access. Better access to where the spark plug wires are. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is be able to get your spark plug wires separated. And to do that, you need to remove that uh, retainer. So just take a flathead screwdriver and pry into it like that. And release the tab like so. Okay, from there you can get the wires out. And pull straight out on the boots. This is cylinder one. You might have to rotate and twist at the same time while you pull out. And the plugs that have been stuck here for the last seven years and never changed in 114,000 miles, you might have a little difficulty, but they do come out. The same here. Pull out. All right, and that leaves you with the two spark plug holes. This is a 5 8 socket, spark plug socket with a universal and a wobbly extension. You may have to use a shorter extension just depending on the access, but I think on the forward cylinder, you can just sneak by like that. And and stick the ratchet right there. And use that. And from here. <coughs> breaker free. Usually once they're broken free you can pull the ratchet off and unscrew it by hand. This is it. So there's the first spark plug. The 
second spark plug, I'm going to use a shorter extension, like so. Make sure it's seated properly on the spark plug. This is where a flex head ratchet really comes in handy. You can uh, kind of get these guys in. in very strange locations. Definitely a must if you're working on Subarus, flex head ratchet. So that's spark plug two. Um, gaps are extremely large on these plugs, especially that one. Spark plug gap is supposed to be 43 thousandths of an inch, and that's easily double that. So if we look at my spark plug gap gauge tool here, right at the very end here is 80 thousandths. And we've maxed it out. Cylinder one spark plug. Cylinder two spark plug, eh, the gap's okay, about 45. That's a little bit within specs there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the two new spark plugs ready to install and we'll get back to you. Okay, I've got the new spark plug here. Um, on these Subarus, I only recommend using the factory type of plug. And in this case, it's an NGK Platinum. I'm sorry, NGK, yeah, NGK Platinum plug. FR5AP-11. Um, um, sometimes part stores go off of the four-digit code there, 5463. Generally speaking, these plugs have the gap set from the factory, but it never hurts to check them. So in this case, I'm going to use my plug tool here and check. And we're right at 43 thousandths on the first one. And right up on 43 thousandths on the second one. So these ones are perfectly good to go. Um, you want to put a very light coat of anti-seize on the threads so that these don't get stuck in the block. Very little amount. You don't want to put so much anti-seize on it that you end up preventing the plug from getting a good ground on the block. Just like that, that's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and run these into the engine. Since I've got the spark plug socket set up for number two, I'm going to go ahead and run it in. Always run these things in by hand. Don't ever just start with a tool or a ratchet. Yep, just start them by hand until until you can't turn them by hand anymore. Okay, it seems to we seem to have lost the spark plug socket. Okay, so that's the first one. And here's the second one. We're going to put that in the spark plug hole number 1. And I use a longer extension for that one. And again, very carefully put it into the spark plug hole and run it in by hand. Once we've got those run in by hand, we're going to get the torque wrench so we can properly torque these spark plugs. Okay, so very important to use a torque wrench, especially if you're not an experienced mechanic and you don't have a calibrated torque elbow. So in this case, um, we're going to go with 20 foot-pounds of torque. We've got a flex head torque wrench here. Um, works really well on these Subarus and other vehicles. So we're going to go ahead and tighten the spark plugs to 20 foot-pounds. And because I've already got it set up, I'm going to go ahead and do cylinder number two. And just very slowly and smoothly run the torque wrench until it clicks, which indicates that you've reached your the torque that you've set the torque wrench to. 20 foot-pounds is a good 
round number. And just like that, we're right at 20. So repeat the process on the forward cylinder. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do cylinder one now, 20 foot pounds. I'm using my hand at the bottom to keep the extension more or less centered on the spark plug hole. Give us the most accurate torque reading. And you see, just like that, we'll write it, 20 foot pounds. And then, now we can remove we can remove the uh, spark plugs on the other two cylinders, cylinders three and four. Just like on the other side, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the clip holding the spark plug wires, like so. And these things are free. And we'll start down here. Twist, twist, twist. Ugh, pull. The spark plug boot comes right out. Go ahead and move it out of the way. It's out of the way. Now we'll do cylinder three, which is the rear cylinder. Oh, that one came out rather easily. Yeah. Same thing, thread it through. We're going to be replacing these wires after we get the plugs in. So I'm not overly concerned about not wrenching on it. Okay, as I was saying before, the camera died. Um, if you're planning on keeping your existing spark plug wires, don't bend or reef on them too badly, but in this case, they're the original old 115,000 mile wires, so good idea to replace them. Um, and this is the setup I use on the driver's side, have the universal here with a short 3 8 drive extension. I find this fits really well. We'll go ahead and go to the front cylinder, which is cylinder 2. Flex head, flex head ratchet as before. Okay, and we'll just break it free. Okay, now it should be. Be able to get this out by hand now. Like so. See how the universal bends out of the way? That's the trick of the trade for these cars. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and work on cylinder three, which is this back one. The one that most techs absolutely hate. But if you have the secret which is that short extension and a universal. Not too terrible. And a flex head ratchet. It doesn't have to be snap-on, it just has to be a flex head. Long handle flex head preferably. Which gives you the leverage to break free. Break free the spark plugs that were probably over tightened by the Ninja Techs at the Subaru factory. Now that we got it broken free, should be able to unscrew it. If I can get my hand bent in the right direction, should be able to unscrew it from the block by hand. Okay, and carefully pull the spark plug out, just like so. And look at that huge gap. That might explain the misfires this engine was having. Let's get our trusty gauge here. Yep, maxed it out. It's well beyond 80 thousandths. Replace your spark plugs every 50,000 miles, people. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna proceed to installing the new spark plugs, so we'll get you in the next segment here. Okay, as before, I've gotten the copper anises put on the 
first few threads of the spark plug and I've checked the gap to make sure it was at 43 thousandths, which that is true in both of these spark plugs for cylinders two and three. <clears throat> Let me grab my trusty torque wrench, get it ready. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and start threading in cylinder two because it happens to be closer, or cylinder three, but sorry, cylinder two. I stand corrected. Cylinder two, it's closer, easier for me to get to right at this moment. I'm gonna thread it in by hand until it stops. Flex head, torque wrench set to 20 foot pounds. Over, for those of you outside of North America, that's 27 Newton meters. Thread it in easily and nicely using my bottom hand to support the extension and try to keep it centered in the hole so we don't bust the tip of the spark plug. Also another reason why I like to use a universal right up against the socket. All right, we're at 20 foot pounds. Go ahead and pull this guy out. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and proceed with cylinder three. Same thing, anises, check the gap, yada yada. Except we've got to carefully thread the spark plug in without touching really anything else. And you can see here how that universal really helps. And as before, and you can't really see it from here, just thread it in by hand. Muy importante. Always done it in my hand, otherwise you can cross thread it and then you're gonna have to pull the engine out because it's very hard to get these Subarus Keely coiled or whatever with the engine in place. There's just no space to run a tap, at least not very effectively. This is also why if you have poor quality tools like this, you don't fit onto the socket or the, the universals too well, you'll have a problem with extracting this stuff out. Another trick of the trade is if you have issues where your extensions don't fit so securely onto the universals or the sockets, you can wrap this with a few stripes of electrical tape and that keeps things together at least well enough so that you can pull a spark plug socket out of the cylinder and that's uh, a trick I should have remembered to do. Okay these are the spark plugs, uh, spark plug wires that I like to use on these cars. NGK, um, pretty much the same manufacturer who makes the factory Subaru plug wires and you get these for a lot less money than what your Subaru dealership would charge you. Um, the plugs are already pre-numbered pre for the cylinders. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change my gloves real quick so that I don't get these nice new plugs all grimy. Um, but anyway, you know, cylinder four, cylinder two, they're all numbered. What we wanna do is just start one wire at a time. So in this case, cylinder one, we'll unplug it from the coil, put dielectric grease in both sides of the boot, and then run the new cable in the same location that the original ones were in. So. All right, so very important, use some dielectric grease in the spark plug boots like so. Just put a dab of it in there. And probably 
I just put a little bit on this side, the coil side, just to just help to keep moisture and other contaminants out of the connection. And also keeps it from getting stuck the next time you need to remove it. So this is cylinder three. I misspoke earlier, so the way these cylinders are located on a Subaru, passenger side, front one's one, three, two, four. So if I misspoke earlier, I apologize. These cards are a little bit different. So anyway, we're just routing the new spark plug wire the same way that the originals were. Just like so. To the bottom here, which is where I pulled the original plug from. You want to push it until you get a good click out of it. And then on the bottom here, same thing. Get it in there and push firmly until you get a good secure click. And make sure that ensures that you have a good solid connection. And go ahead and put it in the spark plug wire separators right here. And then repeat the process in the remaining three cylinders. So in this case, cylinder one. A little bit of dielectric grease here. A little bit of dielectric grease here. Plug them in, put them in the wire holders. And you should be good to go. Make sure you push it until you get a good firm click. Same thing here. Just run, run things in the way they came out. And push until you get a click. And then go ahead and run run the new wires. Nice pretty blue wires on to your spark plug wire separators and then go ahead and lock it in place. Repeat on the other two cylinders and I probably won't bother to get that on camera because it's the same thing. We'll get back to you in the next clip. Okay, so we finally got all of the plug wires in to the respective places and their holders locked down and everything nice and orderly the way it should be. So now it's just a matter of putting this plumbing back together. Pretty easy. Just remember, be methodical in how you do things. So we get, get these hoses slightly bent out of the way so that you can put this air filter box in. There's hooks on the bottom that this lines up with. Once you get the bottom hooks in, you can go ahead and okay, as I said, once you get the bottom hooks in, the top part of the air box will just clip together like so. If the clips do not just snap on with finger pressure like this, that means you have not gotten the bottom settled in the way it should be. Next, you want to take this power steering hose and clip it into the side of the air box, like so. Okay. Then, take the wiring for the mass airflow sensor and route it the way it was when you, before you took it off. And I guess it would be behind the power steering hose, so we'll unclip it. Reroute it. Like so. Put this peg back in its respective hole in the air cleaner box. Push through until it clicks. Put the power steering hose back in its spot. Put the rest of the plumbing in its spot. Like so. And like so. There's a notch. See this right here? There's a notch right where my finger is. Make sure that's lined up. There is no such notch on the bottom. What I like to do is I like to get the top one here screwed in and tight. Nice good fit. And then work my way to the air box side. Take this accordion boot 
and there's no notches to locate it so you just want to make sure it's on up to the flange here and then tighten tighten the screw and I'm gonna re-loosen it here just to make sure it's on precisely like such the hose is up against this flange here, indicating that it's on properly. And then, that's it. We've completed the spark plug job. Should take you anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. Okay, so once we've made sure we got all our tools and stuff out of the way, um, and the wires are all plugged in and in their respective places, proper places, Go ahead and start the engine and make sure we've done the job correctly. Got a nice smooth running engine. Well, as smooth as a Subaru gets anyway. We got a noisy air AC compressor, but that has nothing to do with our spark plug change, good to go.